Welcome to the Harley Gravestone horn cover video. You can see here I've got a bit of Hexus spray mask, so it's just a vinyl, a see-through vinyl, which I use a lot for masking. Great for application and all that sort of thing. So stick it over your reference. I've printed out the reference to scale, so it's the exact size of what I want the mural to be on the horn cover. And now I'm just tracing through all of my artwork, just so that I get everything accurate and then this will become my stencil that I'll use in combination with freehand airbrushing. Okay, now I'm removing my vinyl, so the Hexus vinyl, stick it back on the backing sheet. You can see the artwork's transferred. I'm now prep soling the horn cover, so wipe it on and then wipe it off with a clean rag, just so that you get all the grime and dirt off. Now you can see that everything's sketched on using my Sharpie. I now cut each line with my X-Acto knife, make sure you've got a brand new blade in there um, and just trace around every line carefully. You could do this with a plotter but for this particular job I just felt it would be easier to do it all by hand. So just cut everything as accurate as possible, try and keep the logo as neat as possible and obviously don't press too hard because otherwise you will cut through. Now I cut another sheet of the, uh, of the vinyl, stick that over the top and then that's going to transfer the entire piece on. So I haven't weeded it as yet. I will do that as I begin airbrushing because I'll remove the bits that I need to remove in order to spray through the gaps. So make sure it's all nice and smooth. If you need to, you can get a hair dryer and that will shape the vinyl a little bit more. Whenever you peel the application tape off, pull back on a 180 degrees and um, that way it's easier to remove. Now you see I'm just removing the actual stone part of the headstone and it's quite difficult to remove around the intricate logo so I need to be careful but with the sharp knife I just basically cut little bits and pieces so that I can remove the stencil without removing that positive mask for that lettering, so that wig lettering. So it takes a little bit of time. Uh, make sure obviously your hands are clean, but we will give it another prep sole before we start airbrushing. So you can just see here I'm going very careful just to remove all the excess vinyl and then that'll leave a negative space which will begin with the airbrushing. Alright, so I'm still removing all that vinyl. Now you can see some edges I, I had to cut just to get them nice and flat. Obviously if this was going on a helmet it would be even harder because it's more curved. But like I said before, you can use a hairdryer. I mask off all the background area just so that it's nice and neat. Um, so we don't get any overspray around the areas that we don't want. So we don't want painted, obviously. Now I'm back with the prep sole, carefully wiping around it. And um, again, drying that prep sole off. Now what I'm using here is actually a household wooden peg, which is perfect for a spatter tool. Now you can see I'm angling the airbrush down onto that peg, which then creates the spatters. The closer you are to the tip, the finer the spatters, the further away, the more coarse. So you can do this without adjusting the air pressure. I've now dusted the white just to fog in that area and get a base color. So everything's got the spatter on it, just so that there's a bit of texture. Now I'm gonna start airbrushing fine detail, like the veins in the marble. Um, just you know for the rock texture and what I want to do is I want to hit the top edge of this gravestone so that's where the highlight is happening so instead of making a stencil with the vinyl just use a make your own freehand template from the actual original artwork that I've printed off because it is to scale so carefully hold on to it and blow around with the white this is a house of color white uh, rather thin but it has pretty good coverage and it flows nicely so and I just airbrush that in like that. Okay, so now freehand again, I'm going to run the cracks. So these are the, the highlighted cracks. So we, we will come in with black later on, a thin down black. But basically this is, you know, you're shaping it as if this is the only tone you're using, which is a really common technique that I use on pretty much all of my artwork, especially when it's going over a dark base. So nice and close for the bright white highlights and then sort of fog it in further away just so you get that variation. So keep working that, like look at your reference and, and you know just really make sure that you get all the detail in there. Even though it's a small piece, 
I wanted to really go crazy on the details. So now I run some more veins and cracks running through the rock. So same sort of thing, just up close with your airbrush. Don't pull far too far back on the trigger, and um, you know just really keep it moving so you don't get those horrible dog bone effects. Using a paper stencil, I'm just putting some some sort of uneven shading in there. You can also use a texture stencil to achieve this. There's plenty of different ones on the market, so have a look around. Um, you can see that WEG name or that logo is actually masked up as a positive, so that area will still remain black, so it's protected from any overspray. So here you can see I'm doing a bit more freehand, hitting all the lightest spots, the real bright edges, the base of the tombstone there. I'm just running that bright white highlight so that's just going to make it all pop. So just keep working it in. Now what I want to do is I want to do a, a, a carved look. So I want the, the lettering to look as though it's being carved into the stone. So to do this you've got to start off with the highlight. Remember that that is there's a positive mask there, a vinyl, so that, that remains there. So that's sort of protecting a bit of my overspray and will create the actual wording. Um, but basically you hit the bottom edge, so where the light source is, it's the opposite edge. So the edge that, if you can imagine, it's recessed, so it would be the edge that sticks out and the sun's going to hit that spot. So keep rendering that nice and close because you want the highlight to be pretty bright. So that's all done. Now we get the spatter tool again and we are going to continue to spatter just to add more grain. Um, just more texture to the whole thing. So again, adjusting further back on the on the timber peg or closer. So you can also achieve this by turning the pressure down, but you know I find there's a lot of control with with a household peg and it works really well. Okay, now I've got to put the dates in. So what I need to do is I've printed them out to scale. Um, I've drawn on the back of them with a grey lead, and I'm just going to transfer it similar to how you would transfer using carbon paper. So I'm just drawing back on it with a HB pencil and that, that will transfer it onto my paint, onto my painted area and then I can airbrush it from there. So going back in and just making sure all the letters are correct and double, triple check your dates um, because it's fairly important, especially when you're doing a tribute piece like this. Okay, with the airbrush now, up really, really close. Um, turn the pressure down a little if you need to and start just um, outlining these letters. So I'm just sort of trying to hit that left edge just to hit the highlight edge because I will render them more with the thinned out black later. So do that and then um, back to spattering now and I'm actually using a thinned out black. So we're getting a lot of grain in there now, a lot of texture. And with that black now what I'm doing is I'm basically up really close and cutting in on all the cracks. So everything now, you just, you know, up nice and close, but also further back with a bit of shading. So just to really start to render it and make the whole piece look three dimensional. Keep referring back to your reference and, um, you know, try and get it as accurate as possible. Okay, what I'm doing now with the thinned out black is I'm running that edge just underneath. So basically to make it look like that lettering is recessed into the stone. So again, that, that area is still masked up, so don't stress too much about it. And I'm just hitting the right-hand side of each letter, so up nice and close with the airbrush, and just hitting that right-hand side to give that a nice 3D effect too, so it looks like the, the lettering is carved in. Now using a paintbrush and some Wicked, Createx Wicked paint, um, I just hit that other alternative edge with a nice bright white highlight. It's just a bit cleaner than the airbrush and um, we're going to knock that back later so it's not that stark. So just nice and careful with your paintbrush. Keep it thin and then I've switched to black. So um, just a thinned out black and I'm just dusting back those letters just so it's not too stark and not too white. So you can also use the paintbrush for other highlights if you're not confident with the airbrush, but seeing as those uh, dates were fairly small, it just um, seemed sensible to use a paintbrush. Now switching back to my House of Colour White, I'm cutting in on all of the bright white highlights again. So I'm just, even the cracks, just hitting one edge only just to get that 3D effect. And I'm working the top area because that's where the main light source is coming from. So 
really, really up close and bright. Okay, now what, what I'm doing is I'm removing that positive stencil so you can see the lettering is now black. With the white, I'm just dusting. So not too heavy, just following those letters. And then coming in and freehanding again, just a bit darker under that shadow tone so that it looks recessed. So using a thinned out black, you can see now I'm just creating that 3D effect. And then from a distance, just dusting back over it just to knock everything back so nothing is too contrasty. Okay, I'm removing the bottom section, which is where the highlights are going on that marble and just uh, adding that final highlight to the base of the tombstone. So unmasking again, I wasn't happy with my cut line, so I'm just neatening that up. Just freehand and be careful, don't push too hard. And just running those final highlights in and that's it. You'll see the finished piece. Uh, this is the completed horn cover, all two pack cleared. Um, so I hope you enjoyed the video and we'll have another one ready for you soon.